little bit of history. Chrysanthemum comes from the Greek meaning golden flower. So evidently the early chrysanthemums were all gold in color. It has been cultivated as an herb in China for more than three and a half millennia. And as a matter of fact, at one point, it was illegal for commoners to cultivate the plant as an herb in China. Only aristocracy, nobility were allowed to grow it. It passed through Korea into Japan around the fourth century. And as such, there is a lot of folklore and history that surrounds chrysanthemum in medieval Japanese society. I understand that chrysanthemum was emblazoned as a etching upon the sword of the Mikaido's warriors in Japan, perhaps symbolic of what I'm not terribly sure. Crept into Europe in the latter part of the 17th century, where, oddly enough, it didn't see a lot of attention. But it arrived in the United States in the late 18th century, and now is the world's most important flowering plant from the standpoint of dollar value. This is because chrysanthemum is used as a cut flower, and it's used as a potted flower, and it's used as a perennial flowering plant. So it's a plant that does have a lot of different uses. Now, that said, it belongs to the genus chrysanthemum, and this keeps going back and forth with regard to scientific nomenclature. Morifolium, the X, means that there's a hybrid in there somewhere in history. This is a member of the Asteraceae, previously Compositae, plant family. The flower of Asteraceae plant family members are called capitulum or capitulata for a plural. And they're characterized by an outer row of ray florets, which we might call petals, but they're really florets, and an inner disc of a tuft of disc florets. It's important to note that the genetics behind chrysanthemum are very complex. It's actually a hexaploid. All animals in most plants are diploids, meaning they have two sets of chromosomes. Chrysanthemum has six sets of chromosomes, and this causes a lot of diversity within one species. Importantly, it is a photoperiodic short day species, meaning that it blooms in response to long uninterrupted periods of darkness that begin usually in the month of August as a trigger, and then the response time varies according to the cultivar. Many different flower types available with chrysanthemum, most often as they pertain to the appearance of the ray florets. Here you see a few of those listed by the American Chrysanthemum Society. Most of the chrysanthemums that are used either as cut flowers or certainly in the case of the garden mums, are the so-called decorative type, where there is a preponderance of ray florets, but there will be in the center at least one disc floret, hidden, but on the other hand, present. The growing of hardy chrysanthemums took a huge leap forward in the early 2000s with the introduction of what are called the Belgian or European influence mums, because there has been some hybridizing done. This has resulted in a plant that is a bit later in maturity, and by that the response time is a bit longer than early types of garden mums. But the flowers are just overwhelming with regard to numbers. Here you see two different cultivars. I show you a top view, and they are that perfectly symmetrical in the case of production by a local greenhouse. Well, a number of years ago, and I inherited this picture, I didn't take it, but nonetheless, chrysanthemums were grown in soil. And if you went to your local nursery to buy a mum for decoration in the fall, they'd hand you a shovel in a box and point you to the field, or maybe they would go and dig it for you. Chrysanthemums are that resilient that you can dig them, and in so doing, undoubtedly, injure some of the root system, plant them, water them, 
And because of the cool temperatures associated with the time of the year for chrysanthemum flower, they usually do fairly well. Today, we grow chrysanthemums in containers. I dare say that 99.9% .9 are grown in containers, each container usually containing one plant in on drip irrigation. And here you can see toward maturity. Container grown plants are grown in a peat light soilless medium. So they require a lot of water, especially at this stage. And that's important to remember as we talk about using chrysanthemums in the landscape. First of all, a few buying tips. I would always purchase from a reputable greenhouse. It's good to buy in bud and not full bloom. In bud simply means that, okay, we can see the color. Perhaps we are that familiar with the cultivar that we know what it's going to be. But because it's not in bloom, it's going to last a long time. And if we choose to plant it in the ground, it will tend to establish itself more quickly. Always inspect for insects. Watch for wilting on one side of the plant. This is indicative of a disease called Fusarium wilt, which is very problematic in chrysanthemums. And I would avoid clearance rack plants because they're there for a reason they didn't sell. And if nobody else wants them, I don't think I would want them either. Post-purchase care depends a lot on your use. Most, if oh, I have 90%, I would say, are kept in containers. Now, they might be repotted in a larger, more attractive container on the left, or they might be kept in the original container and double potted and watered in place. There are, though, some people who want to plant them in the ground, using them as annuals, and others who want to plant them in the ground so they come back next spring to be treated as a perennial flowering plant in your border. The overwintering, if we're planting them into the ground to use them as a perennial flowering plant, do not fertilize the plant in the fall. Chrysanthemums are reliably hardy through about zone five, which includes most of Missouri. But nonetheless, putting on fertilizer in the fall, A, is not needed. The plant uh, has, if you will, all the groceries in the bag with regard to surviving until frost. And then we cut it back after a killing hard freeze. It's probably a good idea to mulch at least the first winter. We do this to keep the soil from alternately freezing and thawing. And if you will, frost heaving the roots of the plant out of the ground, remove the mulch when temperatures warm in the spring. And then depending upon the fertility of your garden soil, we might want to feed lightly when new growth forms in the spring. In this day and age, chrysanthemums pretty well take care of themselves. We don't tell people to go out and pinch them back until about the 4th of July to keep them bushy. These new Belgian type of mums naturally form into this dome shape with hundreds of blooms. The only downside, and I don't know that it is a downside, but they're not that early in blooming. So if you want something earlier, you're going to have to artificially provide long nights to your garden plants, and that is not an easy task to do. But nonetheless, put up with the fact they're a little bit later, but they will stay nice later into the fall so that you can enjoy the fruits of your labor.